Como anunció Lujier, vamos a dar comienzo a este juicio. By the court's clerk, we will now begin this trial. And first of all, we will hear the district attorney directly from the Oriental Republic of Uruguay, uh, Mr. Carlos Ortiz Esquire. So, Your Honor, Your Honor, Defense Attorney, ladies and gentlemen, this analysis we're going to do about the use of electronic devices in museums is going to be pretty cautious because this is pretty recent. So we have a scores historical records and we do not yet know the social consequences and there is this fascination with this sort of devices. Something we should bear in mind is that they can be used both for freedom and to promote social control. So per se, they are not etymologically uh, wrong. And it depends on the social and pedagogic purposes for which they are used. We are going to analyze the dis disadvantages they have and their cumulative effects. In these 10 minutes, we will have time to develop that. One of the problems we have identified is accessibility. The lack of uh, digital literacy creates a gap in access to information, and this is closely intertwined with economic factors, ethnic origin, and age. Rather than being uh, an equalizer, they create exclusion and social status. That would be one of the cons. Another disadvantage is that this gap exists at the museums as well, because not all, every museum has access to technology. So there are some museums that are excluded from the use of technology devices. In terms of user experience, although these devices may actually change their experience, they require visitors that are educated. We see that these devices arise, arrive in the educational arena through determinism. And they are taken as if they were neutral. But these devices are nothing but neutral because they impose certain mechanisms and ways of interaction and uh, new logic for communication. They are not as neutral as we think. And we should also pay attention to the content we have in those devices and what representation of society they promote, who and how they are represented, what sort of stereotypes, what family models, uh, what ethnic origins, who are present and who are not. From a sociological standpoint, we can say that millions of people are, are interconnected by default with friends if we can call our Facebook contacts friends. But at the social level, we've never been as lonely as we are today. In addition to that, this mediation is um, made through real interaction. Real interaction is essential for people's social development. Rather than that, they have illusory companionship, illusory com uh, communication, and they lose uh, the skills required for face-to-face -face content. In addition to that, they create hyperactivity, hyperinformation. They end up creating this uh, sense of hollow and other aspects that are associated to consumism. Another disadvantage is that our adaptation capacity is always being tested. If we fail to adapt to new devices, we're going to be somehow excluded. Social networks that are so massive promote nothing but individualizing experiences in exchange for social recognition. And we privilege virtual relations over personal relations in terms of museums. And that will end up strengthening a passive role on the part of our visitors. Visits will become more individual. We lose the possibility of building collective knowledge 
it goes against the forms of organization of our ordinary people, that is culturally, it, it is against our roots, and they end up generating dependence in our visitors. Why? Because our visitors end up having their experience through these devices instead of having contact with the original objects that may prove the most valuable in the museum. In terms of uh, cognitive, ITCs allow us to um, access a lot of information very quickly, but they also encourage destruction. Why? There's too much information, there's very rapid changes, uh, there's advertising, and all of that is destructing. On the one hand, neuroeducation tells us that less and slower, less and slower is better than um, much and faster. So there is some sort of uh, contradiction. Because of saturation, we are actually weakening our cognitive and concentration skills, and that is relatively serious. This scattering debilitates the liberation, and in the long run, it makes us prompter to accept conventional ideas without being critical. This is not a minor thing, because it, uh, it presents some control issues. Another effect they have is that if we use these technologies to uh, replace our memory, we run the risk of becoming less intelligent and less critical. In terms of pedagogical aspects, and well, they become relegated despite being an instructional tool because the educator is subordinated to these tools and they provide a partial view of our reality because we may go directly to what we're looking for without actually touring our environment. So it's some sort of indiscriminate cut and paste. And when proposals may be summarized uh, to pushing a button in some interactive device in order to navigate a document, that creates nothing but mechanical engagement on the part of the visitor with no possibilities of becoming a protagonist, and it's not educational at all. In terms of uh, senses, we live in a time of uh, programmed obsolescence and the power of image and spe spectacle. In this regard, many museums have incorporated devices in order to generate a fascination and show without actually preserving the interaction with the device in, and prevent it from substituting the real object with a replacement of that object, which would impoverish the um, experience. If these technologies have uh, too heavy a presence, that wouldn't guarantee success. There are some experiences that are much simpler without digital mediation that end up being very productive. I believe that museums have the opportunity of encouraging connection by individuals as a group because group knowledge is an interesting source of knowledge, but also of the individual with himself. And rescuing them of all this artificiality and this craziness of the show business as we know it, and providing an inner and sensory experience that may actually be touching and meaningful. Because if these experiences are with the human beings, they are going to be much more complete in terms of interaction, much more profound, and much more moving. Now, in terms of safety, of course, there's the possibility of breaching the control systems that are used with this. And sometimes when they try to update a museum that is uh, hosted by an old house that may create some safety issues as well. Another problem is the uh, sticks for selfies that may become a weapon both for our works of art or the eyes of some of our visitors. In terms of health, we also find some disadvantages. Physically, the constant 
type in creates a muscle atrophy that end up creating tendinitis from the fingers to the shoulders and being spending so much time on screen that is either a cell phone or a computer create headaches, blurred vision, um, irritated eyes, visual tiredness. The physical posture that we use when we navigate the web may be something unheard of. You have only one minute. Okay, I will hurry. Some blood circulation problems, sedentarism, and overweight um, at the psychological level. Network addiction is quite strong in a study conducted in people from 20 to 85 years old. It was a temptation hardest to control. In Pennsylvania, there is a hospital offering a 10-day program of digital de detox. So there's still hope. Nomophobia is the fear of being without a cell phone. Uh, I want to kill myself. I, I, my battery ran out. 53% of users um, experience that. There's also phantom vibration or imaginary vibration. It's like you hear your cell phone ring or vibrate, but it never did. I, you are so obsessed that you hear it everywhere. 70% of users have that. And then there's social depression, which is the interaction in networks when there is no response. We get so depressed that the world seems to be over. Adding that to real life does not contribute much. Then there's cyberchondria. Cyberchondria is like hypochondria. I mean, everything you hear about illnesses online, you're afraid you're going to catch them. Then there's cyber dizziness, which is what happens to virtual reality devices. It's people that are disoriented because of that. There's a ghoul effect that has to do with cognitive problems. And that is, your brain no longer needs to retain so much information. So you lose the habit, you lose the circuit, synaptic circuits lose strength, and we remember less and less every day. Finally, there's video game dependence that is terrible. Some people can spend up to 17 hours a day playing games online. And in some cases, people drop their own lives to do that. And there are some cases in China where parents <laughs> hired guns online to kill their own kids online so that they could return to life. OK, 30 seconds. In 30 more seconds, I want to explain something that is very serious. Leave your cell phones out of reach. The electromagnetic field has neurological problems that uh, has to do with hyperactivity. Wi-Fi under 16 years old affects decision making and emotion control and brain development in uh, younger children. and. Some people fear they may have cancer effects. Some European countries have prohibited the use of that, and they have uh, substituted Wi-Fi with wiring. There are other effects with, uh, when you are filming or taking photographs, you see nothing with your own eyes. OK, not now. OK, I will send it to you in writing. OK, summarize it in two requests. Anyway, I wanted to reinforce this. With the ICTs or without the ICTs, with, with the devices or without them, we need to discover new ways of showing, seeing, experimenting, interacting with the objects, taking into account the reality of the visitor and the reality of the museum itself in the context, without forgetting sensitive participatory contact, not interactive, participatory. And this will mean quantitatively and quant qualitatively for better human beings. I have eight petitions. Silence, please. Silence. Mr. Attorney, you had your opportunity. And now we're going to 
give the floor to the defendant. Well, clearly we need a, self, a, a, a selfie with you now. <laughs> 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 so we've heard a lot of things about how um, our health is damaged by these devices and, and all this terrible stuff and you know I, I was surprised to hear that the, that the, pros, that, that the prosecution didn't, didn't talk, talk at all about the, neo, the neoliberal quant, uh, quantification and the reduction of our society to the binary systems that operate in these phones. I, I was also su surprised he had no, uh, no, uh, no discussion of the political economy of the production of these uh, devices and the mining and all the terrible you know, min uh, minerals and other things that get poured into these phones. But anyway, te technology's been around in mu museums from the very beginning. And really what, what has changed is that the technology isn't provided by the museums now, but um, provided by vis visitors. The first audio guide in a um, muse museum was 53 years, 53 years ago, in 1952. Um, and it's interesting, too, that you know, I couldn't have heard what the prosecution was saying if I didn't use a portable device myself. Um, so 53 years we've had aud audio guides in mu mu museums. It was the Stedelijk Museum that, that had one first in 1952. Um, change, is a const change is a constant thing in our uh, society and in our museums. And whether we use media such as labels in museums to explain what, 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 what things are, perhaps those lab labels have just become available through these... Um, devices. But what has really changed is that, as I said, the te technology has become per personal. And as a society, we are still coming to terms with what, what this means. We are also com coming to terms with the shift in authority and the shift in control we have. The museums no longer are the sole providers of authority in our societies, um, and they're no longer, they're no longer the sole 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 Sole, sole providers of the media and the tech, technology we use in our, um, you know, museums too. The internet is in your pocket. That is an amazing thing, um, and muse museums would be foolish to not ta to take advantage of that and free themselves selves up from some of the things that they've needed to do in the past when kind of uh, the internet wasn't in your po pocket. There is a, 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 um, you know, museum in Australia called Mona that has no uh, label, label, labels at all in the museum, no, uh, no, no, no signage, no uh, text, and every visitor is given a device which carries all of the text and all of the audio and video, and you nav and you navigate the building concentrating and focusing more on works of art at Mona because there is no interpretation physically stuck on walls. Um, but, you know, I would agree with the pros prosec prosecution in a way that, you know, we are, uh, we are a little bit like teenagers with our phones at the dinner table. And we need to create better, um, you know, dining experiences and better family experiences where teenagers want to put their phones phones away, and I think that is really the you know the challenge now for you know museums is to create experiences that uh, create a new uh, that create a new type of sociality, a new set of manners for uh, behaving with te technology appropriately within you know museums because we're in a transitional stage. We are going to a to a moment which I think will be a post-mobile world is coming, where this um, device, the, in, the, in, the internet in your pocket will stay in your, your pocket, but other devices, smaller devices, devices without screens, uh, will proliferate across our bodies, and we, and we will keep uh, these away. Uh, the benefits to you know, muse museums 
of these sort of devices are clear. The benefits for visitors are clear too. They can get ac ac access to all of the things that we don't have on show. They can get ac ac access to all of the interpretive ma materials we haven't provided. They can, op they can act as you know, tr you know, translation tools. Uh, parents can look up biographies of artists or more information about a type of uh, dinosaur for their children while they're in the, you know, while they're in the museum with the with with kind of the with the original works or with the bones of that dinosaur, um, they can also provide for the museum great kind of data about the way visitors behave within our spaces, and um, the ability for um, uh, the museum to take new forms of research. Um, but. Even though we have this phone in our pockets, we don't use, use, use it as a phone now. This is a social connect. This is a social connector and a camera. This has made um, museums far more social. We we see with the rise of the museum selfie that um, people are, are now putting themselves within our spaces and taking over for and colonising, recolonising the museum in a positive way. Um, and I also see when I go to you know, museums that staff use, museum staff use kind of these uh, devices within the galleries to, to uh, take on conservation photography, conservation work, doc, you know, the, you know, you know, documentation work them, um, themselves. But most importantly, I think, you know, as I've said, that museums need to, need to have an opinion about the appropriate use of te technology within their, their, their spaces and be led by the type of social experience they want to create and then make, make that social experience compelling to visitors irrespective of whether it's, a tab, you know, whether it's a tablet, whether it's a phone, whether it's something else, whether it's Google Glass or some, some other thing in the future. Um, and I'm not going to address any of the health concerns because I think they're irrelevant to the debate. <laughs> Ok, hace bien. Agradecemos mucho. We thank you very much for your vision, Mr. Defender. As you know, he's Australian and he has worked recently in New York in one of the most technology driven museums that I've seen in the world. Now we're going to have our witnesses the witnesses for the defender and from the prosecution. So, Mr. Prosecutor, we can call Mr. Nicolas Testone. Come on stage, please. You have four minutes, Mr. Testone. Members of the jury, uh, judge, uh, dear uh, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't know whether to come because I have no um, evidence that I can present here, but I can say that innocent or guilty, it's not easy to um, um, dissect the, the suspect that we have today. To talk about ICT, ITCs, it's not enough to talk about what happens in our museums with these telephones, for example. Because when we refer to the use of ITCs and devices, we are talking about te techniques and technicality as ways of experimenting life that make today unthinkable without the devices and make the experiences of those people uh, who decide not to use the de devices um, unthinkable. I work at Ferro White, uh, and we have a collection of tools that are useless, if you will, because they have to do with railways. And the work of many people has uh, been rendered useless because of a machine has replaced many of these people. I don't know whether in my situation I should be a defender's witness, because if I have a job, it's because many of my neighbors have no jobs. The 
technology change end up with having us open a museum of work to elaborate on the loss. The case is no news. It has a consol uh, or it has to do with a consolidated trend in the capitalistic uh, in the capitalistic world. In the future, machines will do almost every job, we could say. But this is even uh, true for the periphery of the periphery, because there's even a virtual tour of our museum. So maybe, uh, as a guide, my days are counted. The devices do not improve our job, but they bring advantages that modify the nature of our work and open uh, the door to replacing it in the future. But I don't want to scare you with this argument. Maybe the accused and uh, the team of lawyers are not going to be against your source of a job. But I want to remind you that the historical context where the imperative of technology innovation and the idea of horizontality and collective creat uh, creativity were developed. But everything changes, and the tools are in the hands uh, that use them, a force of domination while they appropriate of the sources of knowledge. Here is where the devices are so attractive and inadequate at the same time to um, talk about this vital experience. They have a capability of collecting remotely, and the, it, it brings the walls of the museum down. The distances between the walls of the museum and the outside are being demolished. And we are not perceiving that there is a change of paradigm. The electronic devices represent today an opportunity for critical thinking, but a disadvantage at the same time. These words that I'm reading were typed in a computer. So this validates the testimony, but it makes the trial impossible at the same time. The issue with the technology is that it cannot be judged from a point outside, we cannot judge something that we're immersed in. Each new technology has uh, been a promise and a threat at the same time. This is the tool, the, the secret that the tools in our museum tells. We were the future at some point, and this is said by the, by the steam engine in a locomotive. But we were talking about progress, and the liberals, the social democrats, the Marxists, the fascists believed us. We were their tools. We were their computers, their internet 3.0, their drones. But we did not fulfill on the promise. We lied. We were paradise and hell at the same time. This is what the obsolete tools in my museum say. And only to those who are not looking at them through the cell phone screen and holding them in their hand. We will now hear the witness for the defense, Roxanne. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, prosecutor, and and oh, I'm sorry, hold on. Oh, honey, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm in Buenos Aires. I, I, can't, I can't talk right now. No, and I'll have to call you back, okay. Uh, I apologize, I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'd like to act as a witness in favor of mobile devices and their use in museums and the galleries. And I have three points uh, to make uh, during my short, brief remarks. The first is that uh, technology is never good or bad. Uh, it's only a magnifying lens for the behaviors, attitudes, and opinions of uh, people. So what we choose to do or not do with technology in our pocket, whether we take phone calls on stage or in the gallery, is merely an amplification or a magnification of bad behavior on parts of the uh, museum visitor or good behavior uh, on parts of exploring uh, what there is uh, in the museum. 
We know today that museums have been accused of being ivory towers or fortresses that have not uh, been fond of change or reacting to the public. And it's clear today that the public is using mobile devices to represent uh, their own social identity, uh, their connection and friendships, and the ways that they find objects in our museum to be relevant at all. We'd be foolish to ignore uh, the current of society and to reject them and to say that uh, their view of what's important isn't in fact important to the museum. Uh, the second is that most museums, and mine and maybe yours is no exception, can only display a very small fraction of the objects that we care for. Maybe five to 10%, meaning that 90% of the objects in our care are invisible. And I would say to keep them invisible is to lie to the public. So to make them available and accessible via a mobile device is a much better way to go. Uh, and the third point uh, is really that uh, museums have always been a place where an experience with an object has been mediated, right? In fact, museums themselves are a mediating object. Uh, perhaps uh, the object that is on display in your gallery was never, in fact, created to be in a museum, uh, in which case the museum itself is a technology. Uh, so we've been very good at using the museum as technology to mediate experiences with the objects in our collections. We should be no less good in doing so on mobile devices. Uh, and because I have a little extra time, a fourth point is uh, that the museum staff themselves can use the devices in our visitors' pockets to learn more about what our visitors say, where their viewpoints are, and to promote uh, a third narrative uh, for the museum that's one that's generated by the public that has no basis in our authority as the museum. So thank you very much, Your Honor, and ladies and gentlemen of the jury. <laughs> A continuación tiene uso de la palabra we'll, uh, hear la última our last witness in this round la señora Villagran, Ms. Villagran de la, de a la witness for the prosecution no, I still have one more witness I still have one more witness for the prosecution you're right, I'm sorry I apologize so first we're going to hear the witness for the prosecution Mr. Ricardo Pinal Please do not make any comments or I will have to um, <laughs> hold you in contempt. I was asked to give testimony and we are going to improvise with a great piece of oratory. You have four minutes since you unfold the cheat sheet you have there. It is entitled From Desert to the Gallery. So I appropriate your voice, Carlos, to defend the patrimony. This is very dramatic today. Look at life today here at the Usina, the history of the Usina, the heart of a thriving city. This is what fed power into the whole city. This is where I first heard the concept of social network with my father. We traveled to Magdalena to our ranch, and he would say, this is where they distribute power to everyone, for the poor and the poor. So everyone had something. Look at us now. Look at us under these LED lights. Who could have a romance under these lights? Technology. Beware of that. Technology in the hands of anyone is something. Look at Carlos that crossed the Plata River. Juan Díaz de Solís named it like that. He was completely elegant for the portrait and in armor. What did they do? They ate, they, eat, they ate him raw. He was the first imported product consumed here. And he brought news to these places. Who's there? Christian. Christian, what are you doing there? Stand up, Christian. 
He's a specialist, a giant. He's Harry Potter's friend. <laughs> He's an art specialist. He's a, a specialist in electronic art. If you ask him for an apple, he will give you a tablet. And he even has a son, and we know his son. And he's like six years old and uh, six feet tall, just like I. And he's from Bahia Blanca. Bahia Blanca, this is where they raised whales. I'm sure they eat them because of how large they are. And in the south were the forefathers of American civilization. And what did they find? They found some fires because you cannot cook a whale in a microwave oven. So what did they call it? The land of fire, Tierra del Fuego and they landed there and how did they call it they call it the Paragonia and this is where Christian was eating their whales and what did these people do you, th you think they are nice but they are not and then scientists landed there and what did they do with what they gave it they did science they are not easy people Take, a, take out his tape, tablet to see what he does. He will resist you. He will call everyone to defend him. And in one moment, they would have a demonstration ready. And how do they do that? They organize it on Facebook. So they are going to take hostages. Do you know anyone that would like to attend? Julio Roca. Yeah, sure. So, he, do you like dinosaurs? Do you like Tyrannosaurus Rex, Jurassic Park? So, I will leave. Time out. So, we had to take away his patrimony. We had to remove him from the desert and take him to our galleries. And I would like to close with technologies. You are, um, you are talking about these technologies that mean nothing to me. And I'm going to cite Marx because he was such an interesting person. And what he said is that history is lived as a tragedy, but then it comes back as a comedy. And make no mistake, anyone can enter free of charge. And there is equality and equality for equals. So make no mistake. We need to see what patrimony is all about. Is that about a patriarch? Is that about Patriotism, I mean, we've been forging our nation for centuries now. Go check your cell phone. But this is about something else. And I will now hope for applause. Now we're going to have the witness for the defense, Mrs. Bichagran. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm from the National Museum of uh, Natural History in Chile, and I will support the use of technology in museums. I'm going to talk to you about the positive experience that we've had with the use of technology and social networks in our museum. Even though we know it cannot replace uh, being there in person, we know that it enriches the experience of someone who came into the museum because they can share their experience in the networks, and we become a topic of conversation, and eventually users may consider the possibility of visiting the museum. Since we opened our uh, social network accounts, we knew that this was going to be a platform for social interaction and dialogue on closeness to our users that would give us the freedom to be creative in the message that we wanted to communicate. Proactiveness and quick answer and this style of communication um, 
has positioned us and we have become well known for our style and we came to what I'm going to share with you uh, for those of you who do not know is graffiti that we had in the museum Carola and Pipe they are uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, and they are going to express their undying love in our museum. We do not condemn love, of course, but what we condemn is where they did it. They did it in one of our walls, which is a um, national monument. Our reaction was to publish the photography of the graffiti with a message that given our style in the messages in social networks was a little bit humorous and sarcastic in a way, but with a clear message uh, of being careful with our legacy and being respectful and have appropriate behavior in the museum because it belongs to everyone. The publication had more than 1,000 likes in one day. In three days, it was 10,000, and it was shared from our own website more than a thousand times. And even though we were a little bit surprised because we had calls from the press, because this was a, a trending topic, and we were called to for interviews uh, in national and international media. We were surprised, as I said, but finally the experience was positive. We gained more followers. Our page grew 8% in one week. And more importantly, we were able to position ourselves and reinforce the message and the dialogue and closeness to our follow with our followers. It was a positive uh, experience. We never met Carola and Pipe, but they must have heard what happened with their graffiti in one of our walls. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to have the jury deliberate. The jury is all of you here, so I'm going to ask you to get together in groups. Uh, our assistants are going to pass around uh, uh, some pages with three questions and a conclusion. So please gather uh, together in groups and let us know your opinion about this conflicting issue with the use of electronic devices in museums. So for this activity, you have 15 minutes for group discussion. So try to be quick to get to the conclusions. Order, please. Anybody who's still talking will be removed from the court. So we have considered each of the sentences. And there is a big debate, and there are conflicting uh, decisions. And in fact, the final sentence is an option between having ITCs being part of the museums or considering them not as the best option or not the best tool, even though they are OK, but they should not be a priority for museums. So the decision will be made and do not accuse us of being populists, but this is a decision that is made many times by uh, the courts in Argentina, and it will be the following. We are going to use a technology resource, which is an applause meter. This is a technology that has a long tradition in Argentina. We're going to give the jury the opportunity. Uh, some of the groups are going to have uh, one minute and a half, oh, sorry, almost two minutes to um, 
give the rationale for their position so that you can say whatever you think can change the history of devices in museums. So here we have someone. Please introduce yourself. My name is Pia. I'm part of this group. And um, we consider that technology is not separated from emotion. And many times there are limitations that do not enable you to have access to technology. So you may have one emotional way, and it's not a god or a demon. It's a tool in the hands of men, and men can define the sense of what they want to do. So your conclusion is so-so. 50-50, right? Any other group who wants to say something? Here? My name is Daniela, and I represent that group at the back here. What we think is that there should be more ways of receiving visitors and to get to visitors. So why choose? We should have as many options as possible in our hands to use them all. So in that sense, there is no reason to decide technology is OK or is out. So order in the court. Order in the court. Any other radical uh, opinion? What's your name, please? My name is Jessica Oppenheimer, and uh, I'm not selling anything. I felt I was the accused, so I wanted to use the mic. The application, as they said, is in the hands of men and women, and the museums provide the content. There are different ways of reaching our visitors, and the tools make it possible to reach those visitors that do not want to come to us or are entertained otherwise. The museum lovers are going to come anyway, and they know you are exceeding your time. Anyway, in the at the end of the day, we want to introduce people to art, and it's those that normally do not go to a museum, or people with ADD and uh, a picture are not going to drive them to go into Google to know the artist. So that's what I wanted to say. Now the final um, testimony from the prosecutor and the defender. No more than one minute, please. If the prosecutor thinks there should be some intermediate point, or are you still accusing technologies? No. In my um, final uh, closing, I wanted to say that the tools depend on the models that they apply to. But the world fosters or encourages mediated communication instead of face-to-face. -face, and so we are losing direct contact. So at the end of the day, I think we have to say that we should not go to the other extreme. We should not be exaggerated. We should not be dependent so as to get uh, psychological or uh, physical damage. Even though these tools are very good and simplify our lives, they cannot become a disease. They cannot damage us. We have to use them. It's like water. If I drink 200 liters of water, I'm going to have problems. With these tools, it's the same thing. So they have to be in the right place and not make them more important than they should be. Mr. Sepchan. So I would, so I would in a way agree with that and say that museums need to have an opinion about the tech technologies that, that they use, and they need an internal 
uh, capacity and in, uh, an internal skill set that enables them to, 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 to make better choices about te technology use and to also uh, keep them um, adaptable so, that, so as te technology change changes, they can stay with the changing te technologies rather than investing in things that may already have passed. Está bien. <laughs> ok. Por último. Entonces. So, finally. Vamos a tener, porque la justicia es así. Hay que, Justice eh, is like this. You eh, have to choose opciones. one of the two una positions. Es que one que son, is that ITCs need to be part of museums in their right measure. And the other one is that technology devices are not the best tool for a museum. Those in favor of the fact that the ITCs are, in, are part of a museum Eight point six. That's the acclamation measure. Those who think that devices are not the best tool for a museum, please a round of applause. Two point nine. We congratulate Mr. Sir Chan in his brilliant defense. I've got to do the selfie now. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 <laughs>